Hey glue sticks, I am interrupting the normal weekly prep schedule to give you two Q&A videos, one today on Saturday and one tomorrow on Sunday because last weekend when I normally was filming the weekly prep, I was insanely exhausted because our baby Gwen had woken up five times in the night to nurse and I just had no motivation. I didn't feel like picking up the camera. So it was a train wreck and I just didn't feel like filming. So instead I'm gonna film a Q&A and there were so many questions that you guys had on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube where I posted a call out for questions that I'm gonna split this into two videos and I categorize them all into parenting questions which will be in this video, so anything parenting related. And then more personal and YouTube slash daycare related questions will be in tomorrow's video. So make sure you come back tomorrow to watch that. So I'm gonna be answering all types of parenting questions that you guys had, so let's just jump right in. So a lot of people asked how is being a mom the third time around, how is everybody adjusting? Overall, I would say it's been going very, very well. I honestly think if you had to ask me what has been the hardest transition from one child to two child children to three children, I would say the first child was the hardest for me. It was just a huge lifestyle change and I went through postpartum depression. My birth was really hard. So the second and third to me have been pretty easy, especially since I was a child care provider. So I have been used to caring for up to 10 kids at a time under age you know six or even age five a lot of the time so that's not a big deal to me of juggling you know different kids emotions and needs and stuff like that so you know it's not been easy but it's definitely not been super hard how is everyone adjusting um, overall I mean we had a lot of stuff happen in a row we had the baby then two weeks later, our oldest started kindergarten full-time. They're in um, school Monday through Friday, even with the pandemic. It just has worked out really well, honestly, so far, knock on wood. And then our two-year-old turned three, so we had her birthday. So it's just been a lot of stuff right in a row, but I would say it's probably hardest on our middle daughter. She went from being the baby to being the middle child. She, you know, was used to, like, just her big sister in her world the last few months. She kind of forgot what it's like to have other kids around and although she's very social and very loving and such a sweet little girl it's been hard and she's very sweet to the baby it's just been a lot of meltdowns a lot of you know honestly could just be the transition from two to three um, but it just so happened happened at the same time as the baby coming so I'm not really sure but just a lot of meltdowns a lot of wants and demanding things and whining and us having to say no and her just melting down so it's that part has not been fun at all, but you know, we understand she's going through a lot and this is a big change for her. So we did, we totally expected that it would be pretty difficult. How has Gwen been nursing and sleeping and all that? Overall, she's just like, honestly, the easiest baby. She likes to be held a lot, so I do wear her a lot, but that's pretty normal for a one month old baby. Um, she loves to be bundled up and warm, but as long as she's fed every couple hours, she sleeps most of the time and at night overall has been really easy it's just one or two times a night um most nights <laughs> some nights five but most nights just one to two times and it's been great i really can't complain because you know by the third one you pretty much know what to expect and she's about as the best as i could have ever expected someone asked about kids fighting after a new baby comes trust me our girls have always, you know, ever since Bryony turned like one and a half, it has been a lot of fighting. Um, our oldest likes to be in control. She likes to decide what's going on and doesn't want anybody to tell her otherwise. So it was really hard when Bryony was a toddler and didn't understand, like we can't take toys and stuff like that. But now that she's three, she's getting it, but they still fight a lot. When they do play, it's the sweetest, most amazing thing ever. And we do get a lot more of that now than we ever did before. But they definitely still have their moments and we have to separate them, um, help them work through. But they're both very feisty, half redheaded little girls. I say half redheaded because they're more feisty than I am, which is saying a lot. Someone asked, what is the biggest challenge of adding a third child? I would say, you know what most people say, that you only have two arms, so it's hard. And I have been used to caring for lots of kids with only two arms, but I think I've never had a newborn maybe with two other kids. You know, I always had like a maternity leave, so that helped, I think. But I think it's just been the crazy moments when like I'm changing the baby and then our 
three-year-olds getting into everything or they're fighting or you know it's just chaos and I can't get to it right then that's the hardest part like I don't know what to do or then the baby starts peeing all over the changing table this is something that's actually happened and Bryony's running around with a marker and Celia's trying to get her to stop and not being very nice about it and I'm like I don't know what to do um, but thankfully Celia since she's five like has been very very helpful I'm not used to that part like having a kid who can help me with so much and she loves to do it so I can just be like Celia can you go get a towel or Celia can you go do this and she's been very very helpful which is a godsend. How did we pick our girls names? This has been asked a few times but basically Celia, I have no idea where we heard that or decided on it. We just thought Celia Ray was the most beautiful name. And then we went through infertility and I wrote her letters and prayed for her. And then we got pregnant miraculously and found out she was a girl. And we have photos I'll insert here of our gender reveal. And it was not um, posed or anything. That was my real reaction. I just like couldn't believe that the Celia Ray I had dreamed of for so long was coming here. Her name means heaven and Ray means grace in Scottish, so it's just a beautiful name. Bryony was going to be a Guinevere or an Eden, but I wasn't set on Eden. Sand still really likes Eden. I love Eden. It just didn't feel right. And Guinevere we couldn't decide on because I didn't like the traditional spelling of G-U-I-N-E-V-E-R-E. -E -E. I didn't like how it was looked like Guinevere. I wanted Gwen and um, so we ended up, I just had this feeling in my gut that it had to end in a Y and we had always liked this name Bryony that we had heard on the movie Atonement with Keira Knightley and it's actually based on a book. We hated the character in the movie but um, we loved her name, it was very Irish sounding and um, just really pretty but not common which is what we like, we like more uncommon names but not totally out there or really weird spellings or anything like that. So. I just said, I feel like it has to end in a Y. And San was like, what about that name, Bryony? And I was like, I like that. So that ended up being her name. We didn't think it would be so hard for people to pronounce because to us it just seems pretty normal. But once people hear it and understand that it's not like Brioni um, or anything like that, they are like, wow, that's a really pretty name. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's not that weird. It's just nobody's ever heard of it over here. A lot of people in the UK, I'm sure, have heard about it just not as common in the state. So we love her name. And then her name is uh, named after a white flower, a vining white flower um, that you commonly find, I think, overseas. So it's just really pretty. And then her middle name is Anne, just like mine and my mom's. And I believe her mom's. So that's been passed down. And then Guinevere, we finally, you know, when we, when we found out, we were like, this is probably going to be our last kid. And if it's a boy, I have no idea what its name is going to be. Probably Harrison or Asher or Finnegan or Sullivan. Like those were some of the names we were throwing around. We weren't sure. And then for, I'm like, I just love that name Guinevere so much. And I'll be so sad if I don't get to use it. And so when we found out it was a girl, there was really no question. And we were like, you know what? We don't like the traditional spelling. Let's spell it Gwen, G-W-E-N-E-V-E-R-E. -E and honestly, I think most people just think that's how Guinevere is spelled if they've never read like the King Arthur stories or anything like that. So nobody's ever thought it was weird. Everybody's pronounced it right. And we call her Gwen or Gwenny most of the time, but she could also be called Winnie or Vera. And I just think it's such a beautiful name. I love her name. It's perfect for her. And, and it's Guinevere Rose. We weren't sure. I really loved, um, we have a, a family member with the middle name Della but I didn't like Guinevere Della. So we thought of maybe doing Adele, Guinevere Adele, which I do like, but it just got to be too long. So we just went with Rose because it's one syllable and Rose, um, my mom really loves roses and their first farm that they named, the farm that I grew up on, they named Rose Manor Farm. So to me, it's just a very special thing because that house is like the most special thing, place I've ever been or lived. So, um, just really special to me so she's kind of named after that as well how do i deal with mom burnout once it occurs <sighs> um i vent to my friends a lot and that helps just through text i love writing and so venting through text to a couple good friends usually just helps me feel better um and usually if i get to a really bad point like over the quarantine i'm not gonna lie i was pregnant had a really rough pregnancy and then all of a sudden there's this quarantine and this virus and I'm worried about it and daycare is all up in the air and everything. 
I got to burnout level quite a lot and so I would go for a drive by myself just to be alone. I like to get out and be away from my family every once in a while if I'm getting too burnt out which is hard right now but even if you can just go for a drive or go for a walk um, and sometimes I'm introverted I need to be away from the people and I love those people but sometimes I just need some space. How did I approach potty training? Well, I'm still working on that for number two. I had hoped to have her potty trained by age three, but with my pregnancy and the pandemic, just both being so rough, um, I just didn't have it in me to do it and she wasn't showing signs of like being super ready. So we're kind of going through that right now. What I did with Celia, we tried when she was two and a half, we tried the like the full potty training weekend, but I gave her apple juice because everybody was like saying, push fluids, give them juice but she really never drinks juice, she never has. And so I gave her all this apple juice, put her in some underwear, and she got diarrhea over and over and over from the apple juice. So, and I was pregnant with Bryony at the time, so I said, you know what? This is not worth it right now. She doesn't seem super ready. So by the time her third birthday hit, I just took all the diapers out of the house, and I said, we're potty training, because I knew she was ready. And that was pretty much it. We had some issues with number two, but we got through it and she's been great ever since. So that's pretty much what I'm planning to do with Bryony. Um, once San has a couple days off in a row and can help because I really don't want to do that with a newborn, um, we will just be say we're done with diapers, let her experience what it feels like to have wet underwear and hopefully it won't be too hard. She's very smart, it's just the motivation. You know, most kids that's, that's the hang up. So, if you're having a huge struggle with it, I would say back off, but every kid is different. I don't have like a tried and true way to do it. I just kind of play it by ear with each kid and I try not to put too much pressure on it. Tips for creating a good routine with a very busy 18 month old. Um, my Bryony is as busy as she was the second she could crawl and climb. So I totally feel you on that. I call her a wild animal. She is just, I have no idea where this energy comes from. I would just say stick to key things being at the same time or in the same order and then have flexibility. So our things at the same time are waking up, breakfast, lunch, nap, and then like supper and bedtime. Those are all at the exact same times in the exact same order, the exact same routine. So when it happens, our kids know what to expect. They don't fight it a whole lot. Sometimes they go through a phase where they fight, you know, bedtime and meal time and stuff like that but you just set the limit you push through and then they learn okay I don't really have a say in this so I would say keep those the same and then you know you can have flexibility in there I think you know work with what works best for your family first and then think about your child you don't want to you know my girls want to wake up at five that does not work out well for our family so our rule is six o'clock and if they get up earlier they can play in the room but they're not coming out and starting the day at 5 a.m. because it just doesn't work well and I'm crabby if that happens because I didn't get any time to myself or I didn't get enough sleep if I'm sleeping till 6 or whatever. So I would say, you know, think about what works best for you first and then, you know, take into account anything that your child needs. But children are very adaptable and they need us to guide them. How do I come up with new strew ideas? If you don't know what a strew is, it's basically the same thing as like an invitation to play or a plop depending on you know there's all different names for it but it's just setting something out in an inviting way for your child to play with and I've been doing this at night for the next morning um, pretty much every week night for my girls so when they wake up there's something for them to do before breakfast since we have like a pretty fast but open morning before the bus comes for our oldest daughter to go to kindergarten and so I basically just look around the house and grab some stuff. I have moved all of our table activities and coloring and craft, like a lot of our craft stuff up to the dining room. And so I will just grab a few things and lay it out. I don't really plan a whole lot anymore because it's just really easy. I'll grab something or I'll grab some toys and set them up in an interesting way. Um, there are plenty of Instagram accounts with different ideas for play, but I try to make it really simple. I just grab some stuff that they haven't played with in a while or they haven't played with in that way. Um, and I lay it out and sometimes they play with it and sometimes they don't, but it's just, it's there for them. So if they're bored, 
they can do it or if they see it and they're like, oh, that looks fun, they'll just kind of get absorbed right into it. I don't have to say, oh, go find something to do or what do you want to do? I just have something laid out for them. So I would say just don't overthink it too much. What are our girls going to be for Halloween? Are we doing matching or coordinating costumes? I would love to do matching or coordinating costumes, but I have two very opinionated older daughters and um, I just think it's their childhood, it's their memories to look back on and I want them to be what they want to be. Celia had an amazing idea of the three girls being the Powerpuff Girls and maybe they will be that like next year or the year after when Gwen's a little older because I don't know where I would even find that and I don't really want to make it. But um, I'm not going to tell you what they're going to be, I will save that for Halloween. But Bryony is very into princesses so she had her idea of a few different ones before deciding on one. And Celia, I'm not going to tell you, but it's an idea she's had, she wanted to be last year, but changed her mind. And then Gwen is going to be something really funny that was really cheap that we saw on Amazon that is just hysterical, um, and the girls love and Sam loves, and it's just really funny. So stay tuned for that. And then there were a few questions about our marriage in regards to parenting, like how are we able to spend time and what time, what do we do to spend time together? Quite honestly... We have a lot on our plate right now with uh, me diving more into Work Life Glue and what I can offer and um, some secret projects I'm working on in the background that are taking up a lot of my time to add more value to you guys and um, just to better serve other moms out there. And then also trying to do preschool at home and Celia's got kindergarten and we got a newborn and then San. This whole pandemic it actually worked out really well. He was off for two months, which was amazing. And then he was just working Monday through Friday, like eight to five, which was unheard of. And so we kind of got used to that. And then the baby came and all of a sudden, he's now back to random times and random days. So he may work at 5 a.m. one day and then noon the next day and be home late and then be off on a Tuesday. Like, it just really depends week to week. No week is ever the same. No two days are really ever the same. And so he has his cookie business called Dough Daddy that he does locally and would love to grow to be something he mails, but it's just been really, really hard to do that on top of everything else and then like mowing and stuff like that. So it's been kind of crazy. So we haven't had a lot of dedicated time together. Plus like by eight o'clock, I'm usually asleep because I'm just so tired. But we are trying, we were doing date night every Friday night after the girls would go to bed. We'd like do a puzzle or a game or something together or watch a movie. Um, but with his cookie business now, that's a little harder. And with his schedule, sometimes he works late on Fridays. So it's hard to have like a specific day and time. But I know we will get there um, eventually having consistent time. Quite honestly, our favorite thing is... A lot of times when he works a little bit later, he'll come home and I will be sitting in the kitchen and he will just start talking to me about his day and we'll just have like this really deep conversation that we weren't really planning, but it's just like our favorite thing. We used to love going on long car rides because we could talk. We still do love doing that. We just don't do it a whole lot. We just love talking to each other. So um, that's our favorite thing to do. And we just don't have a lot of like scheduled time to do that because of everything going on. And then branching off of that, how do we keep our marriage strong? I'm not going to lie and sugarcoat it and say our marriage is always great and we never fight. We haven't fought in quite a while, but I feel like when we do, it's big. Um, and not like divorce big, but just like a lot of emotions big. And then we feel bad and then we make up and it's fine. Um, but it's usually hinged on our schedules and what we have going on because that's usually... It's a really hard thing for us. I know some people it's finances. For us, it's just scheduling because mostly his job, which I love his job. I'm grateful for his job. But anybody who's been married to somebody in the food service industry, I'm sure will tell you how hard it can be, especially with kids. So that's been really hard. And a lot of our stress just comes from that. Um, but we have gone through counseling um, I'm not gonna lie about that. I think it's an amazing thing to figure out how to talk to each other better and to get different tips and tricks. Um, and we just, it's such a priority to us. So when we do go through a rough patch, it's very important for us to fix it because we are in this for the long term and we just wanna make sure it works out. How will we approach Christmas with minimalism? Now I'm definitely not a minimalist, but I'm really working on becoming more of that way. 
I just feel like our house, even now, after going through and decluttering, I still feel like it's overflowing with stuff. So I will soon be doing a whole house declutter and a kitchen declutter. So stay tuned for those videos. But when it comes to gifts at Christmas, I've been making their lists and really just trying to be really conscientious because I have a hard time because I absolutely love deciding on gifts for my kids. I love planning what I'm gonna give them. I love, I just love the whole thing. I don't know why, like I don't really love buying for myself that much, but I love buying for my children. I don't know what it is. So I'm really trying to pare that down because I just remember the feeling on Christmas and birthdays after all the presents are open and it's like, now I have to do something with all this crap and it, it no longer looks like a fun toy to me. It looks like a piece of junk and I don't want that feeling. So some things and I will be posting like our whole what we're getting our girls for Christmas but we're doing a few joint gifts across the board for all three girls that they will share which most of their gifts they will share but these are like bigger items I'm going to make them a storage unit for the dress up clothes that's going to be very affordable but um I Bryony is so obsessed with dressing up right now and it's just in bins and it gets everywhere so I'm going to make a little unit that will go in Celia's room and eventually it'll be Bryony's room as well that they can hang up their clothes. Um, so that'll be one thing. And then um, they've been really into their Our Generation dolls. So I'm gonna get a bunk bed for those. So they like to lay them down before bed. And then just some more practical things. I'm kind of doing the four gifts, but a little bit bigger. So I'm adding like something to do, something to read, something to share. And I'm not just doing one thing for each of those, but I'm just trying to be really thoughtful about what I'm getting and not you know just spending just to spend the limit that i have been given for that we're giving each of them so yeah that's what we're doing i would love to do more like membership things but with the pandemic i don't know what's going to be open next year and stuff like that so it's just that's been a little hard but that's our plan for now do i ever cry from being overwhelmed overwhelmed and exhausted as a mom yes not very often um i've come a long way but especially doing daycare and growing work life glue like when things would get really stressful with daycare which you know i don't talk about like when i have to term a child or parents are being really rude or stuff like that that weighs really heavily on me and so i do get really stressed out and i cry and then parenting becomes even harder when we're going through phases. There are definitely phases our girls have gone through that make me feel like crying um, or actually cry and feel overwhelmed. Definitely when I'm pregnant, I get more overwhelmed and cry just because it's really hard and the hormones and everything, but I am human, I am not a robot, I cry just like everybody else. I just don't always show it on camera because I'm dealing with it. Somebody asked about quiet time and how we have switched, you know, before Silly started kindergarten, she was home all the time and we would do quiet time in her room for an hour before she could come out. And this was just a great time to, everybody has their alone time, Bryony would be sleeping, Silly would have alone time, I would get some time to just listen to quiet and get some stuff done. So my main thing is um, put a timer on, even a visual timer if you have it. So. We have an okay to wait clock. You can also set that for nap time. So it would have a timer that counted down and then it would turn green when she could come out. So that was helpful for her to see. Okay, once it's green, I know, and she can see the number getting smaller. And then she had toys in her room. So I would say, you know, give them something to do if you're gonna have quiet time and they for sure aren't going to nap. So books, quiet toys. She had her dollhouse with her Barbies and LOLs that she loves to play with so she would just kind of get engrossed in that and then just be strict about it. I think it's a wonderful thing to have. It's not a punishment at all. I just would really explain to her like she's introverted so I use that word. I say you're introverted just like mama. We need time to ourselves or we get really cranky and then I'll give her an example. You remember when we had that day where we did this and this and this and you never got a break and you had a big meltdown that night? That's because you are introverted and you need time alone just like mama. And so this is your time to get your energy back and this is my time so that we can be really happy together. And it's a wonderful time where you can do whatever you want in your room by yourself and you don't have your sister bothering you. So just frame it in a good way and then, you know, draw the line. This is what I expect and if they keep coming out, you keep putting them back and you try not to get emotional about it, even though it's hard, but that's what I did and it ended up working out really, really well. And then somebody asked, what do I do when I can't go outside with the kids? Um, that is a lot of my life. I feel like in Minnesota there are, especially two winters ago, it was so cold, like school kept getting closed because of the cold. 
which was insane um, and so it was way too cold to go outside to play so we have lots of times like that it's not fun but we have that's probably why I have so much stuff to do in our house we do crafts we might bake we will I'll set up forts I mean I feel like there's so much stuff I don't really have a good answer for this but I'll just I have a lot of toys in rotation so there are a lot of toys they haven't seen in a while I might pull out um, we'll do crazy craft where I just spread out a bunch of random stuff and give them some glue and some scissors and some markers or crayons and let them just go crazy. They love that. Um, have a dance party, watch a movie. Like, I'm not opposed to that when we're stuck inside for long periods of time. Just be creative. Like, have your kids decide what they want to do. Build something out of boxes. Um, I don't know there's just so many things you can do when you really look around your house i believe those are all the parenting related questions so make sure you come back tomorrow for the more personal questions and the questions related to youtube and daycare thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time bye guys